episode season two. Hi, so much is going on. Let's crack on. We left it. Jib is going to move from Bangkok. Casey's her new driver. He's on salary. She needs to move to Patea, find a place, and do the move. She also needs to go back home and see her family. Um, in the UK, police have arrested all these girls, except the two elders. The two main ones are out of the country at the moment. But they're due back. Only a couple of computers were found, a bit of paperwork. There's nothing there that the police can prove anything. They've downloaded the information off two computers, a PC and a laptop. They told all the girls, quizzed them all, and some of them give information out. That laptop belonged to Jib. The name Jib was mentioned. All the girls have visas, they're all above board in the UK. The police have shut the calf. They've told them all, you can still live above. We will be quizzing the two elders about all the legalities of that business next door as well, the shop. But for the moment you can stay living in there, the ones that are living in there. Nothing can be proved, they're all given warnings and they are all released. They kept the computer, kept the laptop. At the same time this is happening, the elders land back into the UK. Police have already put a, uh, a request out to grab them. They land, immediately they land and come through. They're grabbed, arrested and transported to the police. Nobody's had a chance to talk to them. Nobody's been able to warn them. Landed straight to the police, arrested. The lawyer, John, he's talking to his friend, the policeman, and the connection, the word jib comes up, the name, the laptop. The lawyer requests all the information off the laptop be released to him as he's helped the police point them to the cafe. The police have, you can see the information. He's dissecting the information and it shows that Jib did use the laptop to make a couple of the withdrawals. And there's information on where the money's gone to, bank, and times. He's got enough information now to put something together. He's going to have to investigate more. Immediately though, he's going to have enough to talk to the Bangkok bank where the money was sent. He gets onto them tells them there's police investigation into a brothel, money laundering, all the rest of it, and he can now tie that money to the bank from the cafe. The Bangkok Bank agree to freeze Jib's account in Thailand, but nothing else without further information. That's fine. The lawyer says, freeze it. And they do. Now, Thailand, Jib, Bangkok Bank, her post goes to the house where the parents are. She doesn't use that account. That's just money lying there. So she doesn't know it's frozen. Elders are in custody. Money now, Jib, frozen, Bangkok Bank, in Thailand. Things, the net is starting to close. There's no contact from the elders to Jib and all the other people, the minor elders, they're all released. They're going to talk, surely. But no, they, there's nothing, no information sent at this point. You'd think they'd be straight on the phone, but they haven't. Maybe they're worried. The elders are now in custody. Would they know? Mm, probably. The bongo drums. There's a few holes here, but Jib doesn't hear at this moment in time. She moves with Casey, she goes to Patea, she's got a house up on top of the hill above Patea, past Jomtian, that she's rented short term. She hasn't got as much belongings, but she puts her stuff there. And with what's just happened to Casey, it's not a bad time. She's reported back to Lek, told Lek what's happened, and Lek said just lay off for a few weeks. Fine. we'll get some more people to take the girls over, don't worry. Let's 
quiet for a few weeks. Jib thinks this is a good time to head up to see my folks and she gets KC as the driver. Right, we're going up here for a few days, maybe a week. You're driving me, you're on salary. Casey's fine. He's staying in Thailand, he's getting money. Before they head off, he has a night. He goes back to his go-go bar. Moy's back, the girl he liked. The girl he really liked and he'd taken to Singapore. Initially, she was a bit standoffish. She was embarrassed because she hadn't told him the truth. She'd lose face a bit. He was a bit, but he still went across, cuddled her. He really liked her. Now he knows what she's She's doing the same as a go-go bar, but just in a different country, and she used him. But he has an evening, chatting to her, he doesn't. But I'll find her, I'll take her out, and he chats to Mama San. Says he's off with uh, Jib for a few days up north. But he's seen Moy again, that's good. Next day, Jib, KC, off they go, up country. Jib gets a phone call on the way to her folks from Lek. In Bangkok, Junta, the previous driver, has had a problem in a bar with a couple of Thai people being arrested. Ah, oh, it, it just all comes at once, doesn't it? And he started opening his mouth about his job he was doing to the police to try and get himself out of the problem with these guys but unlucky for him the police and Lek are somewhat connected and Jib got a phone call explain what was this guy was in for and what was happening so Lek tells Jib he's in custody he's opening his mouth um, this needs to be sorted Jib's like well nothing I can do and Lek says I will fix it, I will get him out and we will get him out of the country but this is not good, um, we'll probably have to pay him off and we'll get rid of him one way or another, oh, that's one way or another. More problem for Jib, now she's losing face because she's caused a problem for Lek with this Junta. Lek fixes it, Junta's pulled out, she's taken to one side give him money he's told that if he opens his mouth again it'll be maybe the last time and he is sent out of the country and told to leave sufficient money don't know how much but luckily for everyone he seems to agree Jib gets to her house her parents are living now Casey's got a room there no problem all nice Jib's got lots of mail, and as she starts, after all the pleasantries with the family, um, there's the bank letter. So this is maybe, a, she's got to the house, maybe it's a week, I don't know. And she's got a letter from the bank. Contact the bank, um, problem on the account. She doesn't really think much of it, it's just oh, something to do with interest and things. So she doesn't, doesn't act on it immediately. And she's there, seeing her parents, Casey's wandering around, getting a drink from the village. So everything is happening. The elders are in custody. They've been questioned and questioned, very clever. There's no paper trail. Uh, there's no proof that they were actually the ringleaders, it's only hearsay. The police have got nothing on them, they can't prove anything. All they can do is warn them, tell them those apartments are being watched. So the cafe is closed, the tribe's been warned, license removed, apartments okay can be rented, the shop, everything's going to be watched, the tribe's released. Laptop kept. PC given back and they've been told the tribe that that laptop is an ongoing investigation into a girl that worked there before and they know whose laptop it was 
the released. Clever that they can't immediately jump on the phone and start alerting people. They'll have to find another phone, not being watched, listened to. Elders ring Lek first and explain everything. Tell Lek there's still a connection possibly with Jib, her laptop, Jib's money. And Lek's not happy at all. Everything in the UK now Ever since Jib's arrived, the KC's been pulled at the airport. There's a problem now with this Junta guy. The elders gave, brought Jib into the situation. Everything. The name Jib keeps coming up. Lex not happy. But she thinks, we'll let things go, we'll see. We can still fix things and mould things. Tells the elders, okay, up to you what you're going to do back there in the UK. Um, you sort it out with Jib, you fix all this, I don't want any more problems, maybe you're going to have to replace her. Mm. Elders chat for a bit, they think, now they think, well maybe, we don't know, they're not sure. They ring Jib, Jib's in the village, house, so she's had a call from Lek, Junta problems, there's a bank note there saying ring the bank and now the elders come on and tell Jib what has happened. Jib's just shocked. Oh dear, she's never had this to face before, anything like this. And they mentioned the elders that her laptop was kept. And now Jib's starting to think, hang on, laptop, bank letter, right. She says to the elders, well, we'll find more men to do the mule, taking people to Singapore, we'll get it all back on track and earning money. Um, the UK can't touch Jib over there. And there's no other problems really, she'll sort it all. And she's confident. And the elders think, okay, well, they'll let us try one more time, see if she can fix everything. What the elders do at this point, not sure. Jib immediately jumps onto her bank. That letter, the laptop, is starting to twig. Yes, the bank have said, your account's been frozen. Um, there's information from another country about investigation. We're not prepared to open your account up to you at this time. Um, and any monies you put in will also be frozen you can't take any money out we will let you know if anything changes she tries to argue it with them about everything and not interested that account is frozen how much did she have in there 60 70 80 thousand pounds in that Bangkok bank hmm she puts the phone down so the Junta guy, problems, Lex should have sorted it. Now all her main money is frozen. The laptop, she's starting to think back to the UK. Can they prove, can they steal that money back off her? She's not sure. She's gonna have to check with the elders and start talking to them about that. They will probably know. So she's got no mules. Her money in the bank's frozen. The Junta guy hasn't yet been pushed out of the country. It's been paid off. That's problems with Lek. The elders don't know what they're going to do. The two elders, Jib doesn't know what they're going to do. Jib's in all sorts of problems here. She's not earning money right now. She's away from Bangkok, but here she needs the gold moving again. She needs people going over the border. Oh, it's all coming down on her. All closing in. What could possibly happen? I don't know. I've run out of time. We're going to have to leave the season there as a finale. Is she going to get her comeuppance? Is it all going to come tumbling down around? Is that UK lawyer going to be able to get the evidence he needs? 
not only to get the money back, but maybe cause problems for Jib. John will be happy to get his money back. Peter and Pla are fine. Two elders, they'll probably just set up shop in another cafe, start all over again. So Jib might be fine. She might lose that money, but she might still be okay. Pushing people across the border to Singapore. She might be able to fix leg. Will that keep her? So many questions. Will that join to cause more problems before he leaves? All this from a bar girl in Chiang Mai. What a journey, what a path. And just don't know where the twists and turns are going to come next. Is it going to be a happy ever after ending? It's not looking like it, is it? Oh dear. I'm going to leave you hanging. I'm just going to leave you hanging. You know I'm going to. I hope you've enjoyed season two. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. And loved all the comments. And... Will we continue with Jib, or should we just end it there and leave it like that? Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you soon. Bye.